honor to be joined by Bloomington Jefferson legend who played in both the NCAA and the WHL en route to the NHL. Go Huskies! Woo! Five Woo! O's. Five O's. <laughs> Drafted by the Colorado Avalanche. NHL clubs included Florida Panthers, New York Islanders, Los Angeles Kings, Minnesota Wild, Dallas Stars, Tampa Bay Lightning, um, and Buffalo Sabres. <laughs> Uh, now he may be a suitcase folks, but make no mistake. That shit's Gucci. And <laughs> he has since served as color analyst, coach, radio personality, shout out to the power trip morning show, which we all love so dearly. And of course, you know how we got connected here, Mark brand ambassador of Northland vodka, the one, the only Mark Parrish. How are we doing, Mark? Oh, I'm doing great. Thank you. That was a spectacular uh, introduction right there. Thank you. The Huskies. Go. Woo. Go Huskies. There we go. That's right. Uh, now, Mark, you know, we preface this a little bit for you here, but we're, we're going to take a little unorthodox trail here through our topics and our questions. Uh, we're basically going to take what Corey Cove is so greatly, well, I, I feel like he's about to jump in and plug his new second and third edition of the card game, but... What we're going to do here is talk through all of these different topics by going through the initials overtime, essentially three kind of gimme clues to see if you can land on what our topic is going to be. So quick example, NV. Clue number one. Proud supporter <laughs> of local hockey programs. Clue number two. Also known as the spirit of hockey. Clue number three greatest hockey ambassador in the business mark parish do i get to guess now do i get to ring you, 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 ring in yeah, see, isha, see isha isha ran through that pretty quick and that's why we're doing the example here it's perfect you can answer on any of the clues i love it i, I now i'm you know you got that oh. anxiety going that i get every friday morning now sauce so isn't here pressure. you're okay you're okay <laughs> <laughs> but you also don't have the hockey support system so i'm not sure how that impacts you <laughs> So what's NV, Mark? Uh, Northland Vodka. Oh, there you go. That's right. yeah, my my vodka. I'm I'm <laughs> I'm I'm very proud of it. I, I know it's a little bit of an odd situation. Yeah, it's an odd situation, obviously, with uh, uh, me being an alcoholic. Uh, but that being said, who knows vodka better than an alcoholic? I mean, <laughs> I, I made it before I went in. It was my recipe. I'm very, very proud of it. It's it's all from Minnesota. The corn comes from Benson, Minnesota. Well, we distill it in Copper Wing in St. Louis Park. It's you know organic, non-GMO, gluten-free. Uh, we carbon filter it a few times to try and make it as pure as possible and give it that nice, smooth finish. Uh, so I am very proud of it. It is again, it's my recipe. So it's kind of my baby. I, I have that little anxiety, that fear every time I see somebody try it for the first time, but I just don't enjoy it anymore. I watch other people enjoy it now. Well, indeed, Northland Vodka and incredible partners for us here as well on the Soda Pod. And I mean, Mark, we've been we've been even inspiring some of our listeners and supporters, and uh, well. Yeah, supporters of you and Northland Vodka. We, we've been giving them cocktail suggestions, hockey-related cocktail suggestions <laughs> as well. So one, everyone's been one. supporting. Yeah, well, we've, awesome. we've had a few. We, we've had a few talks off of the off air as well, but uh, we'll have more suggestions coming out there. But it's it's a great community. You guys are great in the community, giving back and working with everybody there in the local media. And last but not least, they have one of the best spokespeople and absolute legends of the game of hockey in yourself involved. And it's your own baby. It's your recipe. So NV Northland vodka, very, uh, very excited to be uh, partners with you guys. And that's our example as we get into uh, this unique interview here. Oh, well, thank you very much guys. I'm excited as well. We're excited to be part with partner up with you guys and see where you guys go with it. Obviously you guys got the Corey Cove creative. Actually you got way better than Corey Cove creativity. You guys are nice. You guys, you guys are fun to hang out with. Well, well we you, you've, you've known us for just about five minutes here, so we'll see about that. <laughs> um, but smarter than Corey Cove because we let him do all the work and we just stole it, so it's perfect. <laughs> borrowed, borrowed. Come on now, borrowed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Crea Jeez, creatively borrowed. Geez. Creatively <laughs> repurposed. That's all. There you is. go. Technically, I think I'm part of the initials game, so I I can give you guys permission. Just don't tell Corey. 
There we go. <laughs> Not a word. <laughs> uh, before we jump into the first set of initials, I mean, anything you want to talk about? I mean, you've been making the rounds. You've, you've really been going everywhere, signing bottles, signing jerseys. Like, what's next here for Northland? What's what's coming on the horizon that people aren't aware of? We are, we, you know, we're just continuing on, continuing on with the process uh, with COVID, with everything that happened. That was our second year. We're just kind of now it's even though it's our third year where this is our second year, really technically. Uh, and we've been doing a good job just getting out to the, to the small towns, getting out in grassroots. One of the things that was very important to me when I came on, it was obviously giving back to the, to this state, to, to the hockey community, to the, to the community that helped build me. I, it, I I've heard, it takes a village to raise a child. It takes a state mm -hmm. to raise an NHLer, and all the support and everything I have gotten in my life from the state of hockey. Uh, this is my way of giving back. Some uh, we we want to get back into the youth hockey programs, uh, give back to where what all started. This Mark Parrish is cool guy. You guys are talking about. I know the Mark Parrish, the nerd, like the Star Wars guy, video game guy. I'm not, you know, I don't know about the legend, the myth guy. <laughs> Oh, perfect. Perfect. Well, we will continue to highlight and showcase everything you guys have going. Cause again, it's so cool to watch. And again, giving back to the state of hockey is always welcomed here. Um, so first set of initials here, Mark, P I <laughs> clue number one founded in 1972. Clue number two. This is a term of endearment used frequently by Mark Parrish. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Clue number three. Mark Parrish has both played for and provided color commentary for this NHL franchise. <laughs> P.I.? Yeah. P.I. Remember, of term of endearment. Term of endearment. Term of endearment. I, I I know the New York Islanders. Okay. What else do you call them? The Pesky Islanders. Right. Oh my God! Oh, that was awesome. The Pesky oh, Isles. Man, that was awesome. <laughs> oh, I missed it. Oh, oh I man. Wait. I would. Oh, I'm sending this right to my Islander buddies, or they're gonna <laughs> die. They're gonna die. Oh, oh. Just like Corey, you stumped me already. <laughs> Oh, this is oh, fun. Lord, All right. How did I miss that? The pesky Islanders. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, we got to go right off this. I, I got to eat crow. The reason that we're even, like, here talking to each other, ever got in contact, is because you're going off about your goddamn pesky Isles. And uh, <laughs> me growing up in Minnesota, not having a team, I clung to the great Mario Lemieux and so was a Penguins fan. And we made a bet. If we won, the Penguins won that series. You had to come on the podcast, which checkmate, you're here. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, if you won, I had to drink and promote and support Northland until the Islanders were out of the playoffs, which anyone who didn't pay attention, that was most of the playoffs. <laughs> they went on a run, didn't they? And, and yeah. let me tell you. As, as much as I'm a pesky Islander fan and supporter, I mean, betting against Sidney Crosby is just flat out terrifying. I got to be honest. I thought I was coming on the podcast within two weeks. <laughs> I mean, you know what? If, if we flip goaltenders, I think you might have. <laughs> <laughs> truth. Hashtag truth. On that one. Yeah. Well, man, these last year's playoffs were just so much fun in general. So many crazy storylines. Oh. Oh, it, it, where do you start? Uh, obviously, the Islanders run. I, I, the one that just pops into my mind is the Kucherov. Uh, how does a guy sit out for a year and, and come back and just be a, the same stud lights out guy from the first game of the playoffs? That, that just blows my mind to be ready for the NHL playoffs and play I think like the political that. term for it is Russian gas. <laughs> <laughs> I did play with Pavel Burry. I, I know oh, about that man. vitamin B stuff. <laughs> oh, that's perfect. And so, I mean, talk about the Isles this year, though, right? Like, largely unchanged for the most part. Now, now I'm going to give you a moment here because really good friend of the Soda Pod, Josh Letty, uncle of Nick Letty, actually owns a brewery out in Mound. I don't know if you were familiar with that, but he's he's not thrilled that his boy got sent off the island uh, what what good things can you say about nick letty and how sad you are that he's left 
Oh man, it's starting on or off the ice. He, he's just a great man. I, I, I like that felt weird. I, he's a kid to me. He's a great kid for crying out loud. He's way younger than I am. Uh, you know, I've got to know Nick uh, early on in his career when he was coming out of college uh, and just all smiles, just worked hard, great laid back attitude, just a good old Minnesota boy. He can go fishing with you, he can go hang out at a bar, he can do anything and he's just comfy wherever it is. Uh, and just love the guy. And I was bombed. I, I love the Minnesota connection at the Islanders and obviously losing him was a, was, was a, was a bit of a sore subject for me. Uh, that being said, uh, it kind of had to be done, but man, as a player, it, he's lightning fast. He, he can come up with offense. He's, he is settled in with his age now and is just so comfortable out there playing defense in a shutdown role. There's just this poise. There's no panic in him. And did I mention he's really, really, really fast? <laughs> oh, lightning geez. speed. Lightning speed oh. indeed. But so, I mean, obviously you have to move on because like you said, with you know the expansion draft, everyone had to make decisions they didn't want to. But like sell me on the Islanders making another run this year. Like, why do you think they're poised to maybe even make it to the finals? Uh, first off, let's start with the goaltending. I mean, with Varlamov, Sorokin, I mean, I mean, they got two studs right there. Uh, and and when you move up from there, their defense, their Pelik, Pollock, those guys that have just become their own. Uh, you go to the forwards, and I love that they've added depth more than anything. Lou is the master at, at, <laughs> at adding depth. I mean, of course, uh, uh, with Zach, uh, there was there was a rumor going around pretty early on in the summer that it may have uh, may have rumor. been uh, done. <laughs> Uh, and I man was excited when I first heard that for Zach. What a, what a good opportunity! Whatever happened here happened here. It doesn't matter. It's tough. I, I was a Minnesota boy. I got bought out from the Wild. It's it's a difficult situation. He gets to go to New York. Forget all about it. Take take a bit of a smaller role. But that being said, as is playing a big role as a person in that locker room, as that extra guy, as that. Uh, you know, when you need a one or two extra guys, that extra punch in the playoffs, you look at what Zach did last year in the playoffs. That's what he does. You let him go in the playoffs and he's going to produce. And, and I love that you have that motor going in with Barry Trotz's team, with the way they play, the, how simple it is and how hard and all, how good defensively it is. Zach is so used to that, obviously, with New Jersey and Lou Lamarillo. He's comfortable in that situation. Uh, I, I love the New York Islanders, actually. And I picked them. Uh, it, it was it was supposed to be a long shot, but my bold prediction on the NHL Network was the Islanders are going to win the Stanley Cup. Love it, love it, and I mean on Parisi too, right? Like it's just nice for him to have that clean slate. Where like in Minnesota, based on the money and how like historic it was that him and Suter were signed, like a guy like that can't step back in the locker room and be one of those depth guys. Whether that's talking from like on ice perspective or leadership perspective, like now he's in with a new team, it's got that developed, and he gets to just come in and add his little flavor to that and try and get them over the hump. Exactly, I, you nailed it. You nailed it. You should work for the NHL Network for crying out loud. That was perfect. No, you know that's exactly right. It, it's tough because all of that goes into it. There's so many decisions that go go. In, excuse me. There's so many discussions that go into a decision like that with Zach, and obviously it was. With the Wild, they were they were they were moving in a different direction. Kaprizov came in. They were, they were younger. It, it just made sense with that kind of move. I feel bad for Zach. I, I love the guy. I wish it would have worked out here. But being his friend, I love how it's turned around for him now to go out there. Like you said, clean slate. He he he's not under that pressure anymore. He's not the hometown kid. Now, granted, he's JP's kid now on the island. So there's going to be a little <laughs> bit of that fandom. But but the New York Islanders, their fans, they're incredible. Uh, they love their history. Uh, they know his dad played there. They're gonna. They're looking forward to him playing there. They they watched him torment them in New Jersey for years, and now he gets to be playing. Uh, I, I, oh my gosh! I almost said at the Coliseum, but he ain't gonna play at the Coliseum <laughs> now. Playing at the Barclays, like, or not the Barclays? Good Lord, Belmont. Play. <laughs> oh, I love it. And now before we move on to the next set of initials. I just have to ask, like, how cool is it to be able to say that you were traded for Ole Jokinen and Roberto <laughs> Luongo? Like, what? I mean, drop the mic right there, Mark. <laughs> well, yeah, kind of. Uh, <laughs> I remember, oh, my Lord. I, I, I remember the day it happened. And and Brian Murray, when I, when I spoke to Brian Murray, the general manager of Florida, 
Uh, Mark, we weren't. I mean, two weeks before, I had, a, I had a conversation with Chuck Fletcher, who was the assistant GM, and it was, oh, you and Bure are going to be our top two goal scorers for the next 10 years. <laughs> two weeks before. That's how quick things change in pro hockey in the NHL. And, and boy, when that trade came up, I didn't blame him at all. I, I was shocked. I mean, Luongo's the, the second coming. I uh, played one year in the island, and Jokinen's his top three pick. Yeah, you know, stumbles a little bit out of the gates. When Brian Murray told me that, when I asked him, I, he was like, oh, I'll trade you for the Islanders. Uh, who'd you trade me for? Uh, the R- Roberto Luongo and Ole Jokinen. Good trade, man. Great. <laughs> Damn. That's all I could say. My second year after my second year, I tell him, oh, man, well done. Yeah. Pull that off. Yeah, high five. Here we go. <laughs> oh, man. Holy shit. All right. Next up, we have ST. Clue number one. Strong association with the number 45. Clue number two. Viewed by Minnesotans as an annual holiday. Clue number three. <laughs> I think I got it. Oh. All right. Well, we'll give you the last clue. Yeah, then. yeah. <laughs> oh. Mark Parrish has participated in this event and provided color commentary. State attorney. That's right. Baby. Yeah, my it makes me so happy that you year. said tourney instead of tournament. Too. I would have accepted <laughs> oh, yeah. both, but tourney's the right answer. No, it's tourney. It's always been uh, tourney. Now, it Mark, is... I, have, oh, I have a tall task for you here, okay? The guy sitting beside <laughs> me here, Isha, he, he's a Canuck, all right? That's what we're working with right now. <laughs> I need you to help me to sell him on, like, just coming out here and going to the state tournament and just, like, how different it is than any hockey event he's ever experienced. It, it, it's exactly well that's the thing is the state tourney is vacation time this is the greatest time of year in minnesota this is my favorite weekend of the year is the state tourney uh being a canadian i suppose you you watch the world juniors you know that's how big of a deal that is in canada memorial is, cup too memorial cup you know. memorial cup too. <laughs> one of those didn't win one of those either and yeah, yeah. That. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, and, and literally for the state of Minnesota, that's what it's like. The cool. state tourney is everything. It's every little kid's dream. Uh, I remember growing up in Bloomington, uh, you know, watching those guys in the powder blue in, in 89, winning in 89, 88, third place against War Road. Uh, all these years, Tommy Curvers way back in the day. Uh, that was, Those guys were kings. They're, they, were, they were gods. You got to play in the Civic Center. And get this, there used to be clear boards, which was the coolest <laughs> thing ever. That was, that was the only reason why I shouldn't say only reason. That was one of the big reasons you wanted to play at State Tournament. But there's a few yeah. more other reasons. But, <laughs> yeah. you know, we grew up I, – I grew up going to it. Uh, I, be, as a kid, that was we, – we got to go to school, get off school no matter what. My parents would just drop my brother and I off at the Civic Center. We'd hang out there all day. We'd go to the Expo. Go in and watch a couple of games, mess around, chase a couple of girls around in, you know, teen years and whatnot or whatever it might be. But it was just that whole experience of being there. And then when your team got to be in there, especially Jefferson, how much I loved it, how much we were hated. I remember 1989, Rochester, John Marshall, the whole arena was red and black, except for one section was baby blue. And it was <laughs> awesome. I loved it. I, I instantly loved being being hated by everyone else just because it was so cool. Uh, and man, it, you've got to go to a state tournament. It's it's the only thing that that I can say that comes close to Minnesota high school hockey is the the college or excuse me high school football high school football in Texas. That's what it's I just, always use. It, it's insane down there. I got to see that in Dallas. It's the only thing I've seen close. And the hype around it is a minor scale of World Juniors in Canada. Oh, well, I I can't wait. And like you said, it's like a holiday. I I plan to make it one of my holidays soon and to to come out and experience uh, that. But, you know, I I have to ask, Mark, how was your flow back then? Because I know the flow is really important to to high school hockey. Oh, I had the mullet, baby. (laughs) Oh, the big, big wave up top, huge, big bolt in the back. And, of course, the lightning bolts and the number. Yeah. I think yeah. it was number two my sophomore year. Had that etched into my side over here. Oh, yeah. Colored it in with a blue marker. Mom loved it. That's amazing. Uh, oh, man. No, my parents would have killed then, me if I, if I showed up at home like that. Mind you, I didn't I didn't play hockey uh, at that age. So there you go. And it was in Canada. <laughs> so it was a little different. The coaches were like, cut your hair and shave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. There's a little different coaching style up in Canada. A little bit different. A little bit, yeah. A <laughs> little, little. 
And I mean, you mentioned like being hated with the Jags and obviously loving that. The other thing that I can't really like, I've tried so many ways and I, I don't blame Isha. Like this is impossible to really portray to someone, but just explain the hatred that the entire state has for Edina. Oh, oh. <laughs> I mean, and they. Yeah, were like, I don't know. I, I see it everywhere. Our, oh. I see it everywhere, Mark. You know, I'm very involved in wild social, or you know, Minnesota sports social media, and connected with so many people out there. I and I just need someone to explain it to me because I see it all the time. Oh God, you're gonna make me. You're gonna. I'm gonna have to admit this on air publicly. <laughs> you know, the thing is, is they've just been good forever, forever. Yeah. I, I, I realized a couple of a couple of years ago at the state tournament, we did the 75th anniversary, and we went back through the decades and. Everybody had their decade. There was Eveleth, you know, and, and St. Paul Johnson and the Bloomington Jeffersons. And everybody kind of had decades. If you go through there every decade, there's one or two Edina wins in there every decade. <laughs> and they just keep winning and, and they continue to stay strong. And, and they've, they've, uh, they're quite well off and they're not afraid to uh, show that. Uh, and I love everyone I know from Edina uh, almost as much as I love making fun of them. Uh, the true cake eaters, you know, it, it's, it's, they, they've got, uh, I'm going to get in a little more trouble here. They've kind of got a little bit of the Minnesota gopher arrogance when it comes to hockey, the Minnesota gopher hockey players, the fans, it's just kind of this arrogance. Like, hey, it's the gophers. That's kind of what he dying has. Like, they're just like, okay. eh, well, we're dying. We can just throw our sticks out here and win. And there was no team. I enjoyed kicking the crap out of more than he dying. Oh yes. Nope. And uh, so I live in Richfield Mark and I'm like on the West side of 35 W. And so me and a couple of my buddies that all kind of settled in this area, one of them, he's actually like born and raised in Chicago, but his mom is from Edina. And what we do since we're literally like not even a mile from the border, like we basically live in Edina with just Richfield taxes. And we refer to it Smart. as, we, we call it Easty Dinah, and his mom will not talk to us. She's so beside herself about it, and that's what I care about. That's why I give Edina a hard time, because I enjoy it so much. Amen. I love it. I love it. <laughs> oh, man. Nope. That's awesome. So, Isha, that sounds like you're coming. Done and done. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> All right. Up next, we have another round of ST. Clue number one. Part of the toughest league in hockey. And yes, Isha wrote that one. Clue number two. Shares a city with a team that retired jersey number 32. Clue number three. Mark Parrish scored 54 goals in 54 games as a member of this organization. Oh, the old Seattle T-Birds, the Thunderbirds, baby. Oh, I had so much fun going out there for a year. And, man, did I, you should be happy to know that I got the crap kicked out of me my third game out there after college hockey. Oh, oh man. Some big guy grabbed me. The, I, I heard the coach yelling, go, go, go. I guess he was yelling, no, no, no. And, oh, my <laughs> Lord, raccoon eyes, broken nose, just bleeding out of everything. Hurt to put my helmet on for a couple of weeks for crying out loud. There were so many bumps on my head. So, it's definitely, definitely one of the toughest leagues in the, in the world, that's for sure. And I Man. loved every second of it. Uh, that's amazing. Yeah, I grew, I grew up in actually Prince George. So I, I'd watch the BCHL. They had the, the Spruce Kings and obviously the Cougars were there. So I was spoiled Friday night, Spruce Kings, BCHL, and then Cougars were I missed Chara on the team a little bit too young for that. But Bufflin was on the team at the time. Dan Hamuse was just wrapping up his time on the team, too. So it was it was it was an unbelievable experience. I mean, the buff, the big buff stories with Prince George are just endless. Like, <laughs> oh, man, they're 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 unbelievable. But uh, no, I, I actually I work with uh, Terry Ryan and I remember talking to his dad saying that when he was ripping it up on the East Coast, he actually brought him to Junior B early and played in Kelowna, just or uh, just somewhere around Kelowna, just so that he could get used to, you know, taking that step to Junior A and then the WHL because he's like, you're gonna get eaten alive if you come from East, you know, East Coast Canadian hockey, ripping it up, dancing through everyone to suddenly just starting WHL as a 16 year old. But I, I wanted to ask you about uh, about well your decision to leave the NCAA for the dub and just a, like two parts to it. Was it an influenced at all by the Colorado avalanche or did you just recognize that 
You know, like Terry Ryan Sr., the WHL at the time offered the closest style of hockey to the NHL again in that era. So that maybe was the best part of your development. You know, speak a little bit about your decision. Um, yeah, you know, a, a lot of lot went into it. Mainly Brian Lawton, my agent. Brian Lawton and Mike Liute were my agents, and uh, I was negotiating with Colorado. Matt Cohen had signed uh, with with Anaheim. He was in Baltimore, finishing out the year. Uh, and and well, I lost Matt Cullen, and I was pretty concerned at who was going to give me the puck <laughs> next year at St. Cloud. If I'm being completely honest, I was I a little it. worried about that. And uh, and Lawton and Liu kind of came to me late in the summer and said, you know, we can keep negotiating with Colorado if you go to the Western League. And there's a bit of a loophole in there where nobody knows if you'll be a free agent or not. We think you'll become a free agent. And so uh, I kind of went, well, all right, let's do it. And, and it was just, it happened like that over a phone call. I wanted, I, I just made my mind up. I had moved on. Uh, Cullen had moved on in my mind. I had played in the world championships for, for team SOA. Well, a few games, at least, I don't know, a couple of games. I was still a rookie couch kid. <laughs> uh, you know, so I got a taste of that pro game and I, I didn't want to look back. I, I, I was ready to make that step. Uh, and so that was why I went and man, you are not kidding. Uh, NCAA all American. I went out there and, and got my ass kicked for eight, 10 games. I couldn't score. I couldn't figure it out. The game was so different. It was a pro style game. It wasn't the big Olympic size sheets where speed, there was more clutch and grabbing and everything. And, and obviously the toughness of the game. And, and then while I was out there, that's also when it started to dawn on me that, that being out here, it was enormous for my development so when i say yeah that was part of the decision it was kind of later on that i've got that nice little carrot handed to me uh and it, it was it saved me time in the american league it, it absolutely did uh florida brian murray uh chuck fletcher told me the same thing when i when i made that step that was a big eye opener for them because i was ready to play the pro game i was showing how committed i was uh, to becoming an NHLer and in and, 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 you know going through that process of stepping out to the Western League, and I had Russ Farwell and Don Knockbar was my coach. Russ Farwell was a GM. Uh, they were spectacular. Uh, I was supposed to have Patrick Marlowe as my centerman, but he decided to make the Sharks uh, as a rookie, like right <laughs> out there, right out of camps. Yeah, what a prick. So, uh, so I was I, I stayed out there, and and it was awesome. I had such a fun year. Oh man, Trev, those, those bus rides up to Prince George, leaving at midnight, you know, getting up there sometime the next morning, going into the hotel for a nap, a quick, quick bite, and then going in here and cat scratch fever until you want to jam your stick into your own ear. For crying out loud, you hear it so much up there in PG. But I loved it, you know, getting out there, going to Prince Albert, you go, you know, you go to Edmonton, you go to Kelowna, you go to all these towns. Uh, these small towns and it's just hockey. And I absolutely fell in love with it. Uh, I couldn't wait. If that was what the pro game was all about and what, what, what it was like, I could not wait the next year to get to the NHL. And, and I can't thank them enough, Russ and, and Don and everyone in Seattle, you know, as well as St. Cloud. Obviously I, I, I gained a lot of confidence, my, my skill and a lot, a lot of scoring touch and everything came along while I was in college. It developed a ton there too, but it was just kind of the, mix uh, it was like a, a mix of little little perfect world of how it worked together for me uh to help me step in and be ready for the nhl that next year well and you were lucky enough to play in seattle too because again like growing up in prince george and knowing like some of my friends who played in the western league in saskatchewan they they kind of like like how victoria and the royals right now on vancouver island get the rap of being like oh that's not that's not the true western league like, like you're you're not in brandon you know you're not in pg you're in victoria <laughs> or seattle was that part of the reason why you decided to go there because i'm sure there were other teams interested as well and you know, dominant teams at that point because the western league was humming yeah, it, well, it, it, yes, I was a uh, spoiled American. Uh, and Lawton <laughs> asked me, where, where do you want to play? And I said, please keep me in the U.S. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and now looking back, I, I wouldn't have minded experience in that small town for a year. And everything. It's, there's some pretty funny, amazing stories. Some great times come out of there, too. But I love Seattle. I'm glad I went there. Fair and enough. the other reason was literally so it was uh, it was either Portland or Seattle. 
Seattle was supposed to get Marlowe back. There was a couple other guys that they were supposed to get back to make concussions. Unfortunately, I can't quite remember all the names. But uh, And they were picked to win the Western League and, and go on to the Memorial Cup. So I go there instead of Portland. Well, then Portland gets Hosa sent back. And they go on to win the Memorial Cup. I still remind Lawton of that. <laughs> Dang it, I had two options and you picked the wrong one. No, so, you know, it, it, it is what it is. That's the way it goes. And, and uh, I love playing in Seattle. I'm a big music guy. So being the old nice. rager there uh, was, was a lot of fun. I'd go out with my, with my billet dad. Uh, we, we'd go out and check out the music scene and go hang out. And, and it was just a lot of fun for me to play hockey out in Seattle as a, as a 21 year old kid playing against a bunch of those 15, it was 15. Well, there were some 15 year olds, 16, 17 year olds. And one of them kicked my ass. <laughs> oh man. Oh. I remember, I remember when they brought on Bugard, he couldn't even skate and I didn't even care. They're like, just, <laughs> just go out there and do your business, buddy. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh Yeah. Those big boys out there, man. That that was uh, there was there was there was like that invisible fence around him. He just like you know, I'm not gonna. You leave me alone, I'll leave you alone. Is that fair? <laughs> Sometimes they'd leave me alone, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, so I mean, obviously, right decision. Like things worked out from there. But talk a little bit about like not just your time at St. Cloud, but. I mean, you already said it, right? Like Gophers carried that cockiness, that swag, and I mean, back then. <laughs> They deserve to, but now like, look at the landscape of Minnesota college hockey. Like we it's had amazing. to make a Friday segment called MNCAA to cover all six, now six division one teams. Like just talk about the state of college hockey in Minnesota. Oh man. It, it, it's incredible to me how, how much it's grown and, and just continues to grow. The, the, the state of hockey, you know, it gets it kind of said over and at, at nauseum sometimes, but it's, it's true. Uh, we just keep not just just kicking out know, players, but then players that go on to coaches. How about the coaches that are there that we have here for those six, six universities and how, how competitive they are and how good they are. And it's just incredible to me. You know, think about Mankato. Yeah, they kind of came into D1 when I was first there. And now they're now they're up there with the best in the country. Uh, I, I'm I am still still quite sore about the old WCHA. Uh, that was the best league in college hockey, and Why not? all of a sudden, that uh, the WCHA that one stung the NCHC. Now, now, hey, they've they've done an amazing job. You look at what they've done too. Uh, they've stepped right in and been dominant. Uh, you know, Minnesota Duluth, obviously, uh, Sky Sandlin. Uh, you just can't say enough of that guy, Sandy. He's just an awesome dude. Uh, his intensity, I, I would never want to be on his bad side. My God, his, his look would, is just terrifying. It's absolutely terrifying. And, and Bob Motzko doing such a, you know, going to the, U now. we don't, you know, I get it. It stings a little bit as a Husky. And, uh, I, I hate saying that sometimes I'm, I'm kind of pulling for the Gophers, but I've got so much respect for Motzko, what he did at St. Cloud and now he has him at Minnesota. Uh, but just, again, it goes back as I kind of go on to all these details, but it's just, uh, it's just awesome how much this state just continues to to, to grow and, and influence not just the college hockey level, but the pro hockey level. And we just keep kicking out NHLers and kicking, kicking out college players and kicking out coaches and, and all these players that are involved. And I absolutely love it because the world just, the, the hockey world, you know, just gets smaller and smaller as you go up. And it's all my buddies I grew up with in Minnesota that are running everything. And I just love it. it it's uh it's a point of proud for all of us Minnesota boys. It's no matter what, when you're playing, you see a kid from Minnesota on the ice. Crap, granted this a few years ago when I retired, you know, you always went and tapped them on the shoulder or the shin pads. You always went and said hi. There was always a point of pride. It was like being part of the greatest fraternity on earth, being from Minnesota, not Canada. <laughs> I thought you were going to say not Wisconsin. <laughs> Oh, they're not even on our radar when it comes to hockey. <laughs> uh, I don't know, Mark. Nothing made me happier than Phil Kessel giving him the middle finger and going to the Gophers. <laughs> that is Phil. You know, there, there is only one Phil Kessel. He is an absolute beauty. And he, oh, oh I'm going to say he better not change. He's never changing. Who are we kidding? He won't change. <laughs> no. Oh, I love Phil Kessel so much. You don't even know. <laughs> don't get him started, oh. Mark. Yeah, that, that, that's that's a whole separate interview. We'll do that yeah. one next time. Um, there we go. There same we, with Pavel Bury. That's a good one. Same with same with your time on Pavel Bury, because I, I you know I could go off as a Vancouver guy about that. So <laughs> notes for the next one. 
<laughs> yeah, sorry, sure. sorry about uh, last night, by the way, too. Oh, uh, that's okay. That's okay. It was a good game. It was a good game. Don't get over it. Yeah. Uh, I'm over it. I'm over all it. All right. This next <laughs> set of initials here, Mark, this one's near and dear to me. This might be a little bit tougher of clues, but I, I think you can get this one. Clue number one. Former NHL player of Finnish descent. Clue number two. Leads the NHL in all-time shootout percentage, minimum 10 attempts. And sorry, did I give you the initials? No, you didn't. I was right. I didn't. Oh, geez. <laughs> nope, I just realized that and stopped. Isha, you're supposed to keep me on my guard. All right. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The initials are P-N. Go back to the top, uh, Isha. All right, all right. Clue number one. Former NHL player of Finnish descent. Clue number two. Leads the NHL in all-time shootout percentage, minimum 10 attempts. Clue number three. Played for the Minnesota Wild alongside Mark Parrish for parts of the 2006-2007 and 2007-2008 seasons. Oh, my man, my power play guy. We sat on the bench and waited for power plays for crying out loud with Jacques. Terry Newman. That's right. Yes. Oh, now the Mark, shootout king. Mark, you would be he so pleased. <laughs> but they were incredible moves. moves. He, he is, he he is my over favorite. Stick over the top, uh, went to his forehand or went to his backhand. And it worked every time. <laughs> every, every time. time. Just that little just incredible. that little shoulder shake is all it took. <laughs> Which way am oh. I going to go? Backhand, forehand? That no, doesn't matter. Here it is. Yeah. Eight, oh. eight for ten, right, Hoppy? Eight for ten. And Jeez. He, so we had Wes Walls on uh, – <laughs> Uh, in the spring, I think it was, wasn't it, Isha? I don't yeah. even remember at this point. And I told him I had a question about my favorite all-time Minnesota Wild player, and he paused for a second. He's like, waiting for it. And I'm like, but Terry Newman, and I, I thought he peed his pants. Like, he was so thrown <laughs> off by that. He's like, did not expect <laughs> that one, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> be, he would have he, he been just as shocked to hear Mark Parrish. We both played the same. For, I'm not kidding you. We both just hung out there. We were buddies on the bench just waiting for that power play. Or if we pulled the goalie, we needed a goal. Great, we get to play now. And oh my, what an awesome guy. I love Numi. Numi, happy go lucky. Oh, he was easy to play with. I, I just left my stick out and he'd hit it. It was just, oh, he was fun to play with and great guy. And my God, he was deadly. Just, it's two. Technically, it's only one, really. Just two options. Right. <laughs> Hey, well, it's, it, it's like, it's yeah. like, it's like Ovechkin. Everyone knows he's going to post up in the office. Still, no one can beat him. He gets it's it every incredible. time. It's oh, absolutely incredible. Well, I don't know, Mark. Do you remember? So I was there for this game. That's the only reason that like, I hold on to this one. But it was against the Nashville Predators. And for some reason, they decide they're going to play Terry Newman at forward. Why not? Screw it. Goes up, pulls the Alex Ovechkin, just chills at the far blue line, gets the puck, goes in, breakaway goal. I'm like, why is this not happening more? And I'm like, pointing out to my friends, I'm like, see him, see him. If he gets the puck, it's done. It's done. And they're just like, what are you talking about? Sit down. <laughs> <laughs> the, the only problem is, is there's like another 90% of hockey that you have to have to play as a player. Right, yeah. You, you kind of nailed it with like, there he is hanging out at the blue line. <laughs> <laughs> he had his niche for sure. <laughs> oh yeah. He knew it and he did it well. He nailed it. <laughs> oh man thank you so much for that one that was fun oh thank you uh, mo and Numi. i love playing with Numi, man he was skilled great vision great player great teammate oh good old Numi. trip but thanks for the trip down memory lane boys <laughs> yeah Our pleasure. i'm still upset that talbot didn't ask permission to wear number 33 but that, that's another issue <laughs> <laughs> It oh, makes me feel better. They no one has asked about twenty one, <laughs> no, no. and it's been rotated through now. Oh man! Hey, hey, you know what? It's a popular number. What can you say? Yeah, yeah, that's... they they, they want to wear hangs... it to honor you. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> that's how you got to think about it. <laughs> it hangs proudly in this uh, in this stream here. So there you go. I see that. Thank you very much. Oh, Appreciate no, thank that. Thank you. Thank you for sending just the very generous care package. Oh, um. Yeah. Now, last set of initials here for today, BL. Do you want to repeat it one more time, Hoppy? <laughs> yeah, just to make sure that I didn't like black out and not say it. BL. <laughs> Clue number BL. one. 
first American born player to be drafted first overall in the NHL entry draft? Clue number two. Prior to Jesse Pujarvi and Mikhail Sergachev, he was the only NHL rookie to wear the number 98. Clue number three. His NHL resume consists of player, agent, general manager, studio analyst, and uh, he actually has a very close personal relationship with Mark Parrish. Oh, my, my, the, I love this man of death, Brian Lawton. <laughs> <laughs> love that man of death. That man saved my life. That man saved my life, man. That uh, Lotsies, Lotsies, uh, we've had a special relationship ever. Uh, you know, he was, he was the one agent just, I just clicked with back when I was coming out of St. Cloud, uh, and he's guided me through my hockey career and, and obviously much further than that too. Uh, I, I can't say enough about the guy, uh, without tearing up to be honest with you. Cause, uh, it's, it's still pretty fresh. Um, but, uh, I owe that man my life. I want to put it yeah, simply. I, I owe well, that man can... my life. That that kind of just tees up the last one that I have here, and, I, and I'm sorry if you do tear up because it is is it is related to that. And I mean, in light of everything you've been through, I mean, you know, and, and an absolute inspiration to everyone who's who's read your story and, and has heard your story, both you speaking on it and you know Michael Russo doing a very good job telling it as well. I mean, everything you've gone through from all the demons you've conquered. Um, there's always people in everyone's life whom we lean on or who love us so much they just have our backs. Uh, no matter what, I mean, just tell us a little bit more how much, you know, Brian Lawton means to you. Oh man, you know, uh, I should have, I should have known years before, uh, uh, let's just call it, I guess, rock bottom. You know, it just seems to fit. Um, you know, he, he started checking in on me, uh, mm -hmm. when I was retired and I was, I kind of thought that was weird. Uh, and I was even telling my wife that I'm like, why is Lottie kind of checking in on me? He's like, I, I'm not paying him anything anymore. I'm retired now. I, you know, I still love his friendship. Um, you know, and and he and Ben Clymer, Brett Hedick, and obviously my brother, my, my wife, think it, it goes on. But, uh, you know, to point a finger on one man, uh, it, it was Brian. And, um, man, just that day uh, when uh, – when he, when he stopped me and, and uh, it, we were at the NHL offices and uh, uh, after the meeting and he just kind of hustled in front of me. I thought that was kind of weird. And he shut the door and he kind of turned around and, and uh, his eyes were tearing up, which instantly made my ears, my, my eyes tear up a little bit. And, um, you know, he's like, Mark, you're a little off. And, I, in one hundred percent honesty, I've talked to my brother about this. I've talked to my wife about this. I've talked to anyone who's, who's willing to listen about this. That if it was anyone other than Brian Lawton that would have would have kind of questioned me about being off and going on air and working, I would have literally just been like, "Fuck off, mm -hmm. get out of my way. I'm going to work." But because it was Brian, uh, you know, and, and uh, you know, as much as a great friend, almost a father figure for me too, when it came to the NHL, he guided me through my career. Uh, through the great times, through the bad times, and that traveled right through through life. Um, and you know, at that moment, it's funny. You know, the 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 disease is 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 uh, is is effed up to say the least. Um, and I, I at that time when he told me that, I my head was still saying, I, I don't have a problem, Lotsy. I don't know what you're talking about. But my eyes were crying, and my voice was like, Okay, Lotsy, I guess I'll go back to the room. Um, and had he not did done that, uh, I, I think it's easy to say that I wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't be able to do this interview today. Uh, he, he, he I, I, like I said, Ben Clymer and Brian, uh, Brett Hedick and my, my brother, Gino, my wife, there's, there's other people that helped out tremendously. And I've gotten support from everyone in my family previous to, and since then, um, but Brian saved my life, uh, flat out. There's no one else, uh, that I would have, oh, I mean, this is going to sound bad. I don't mean it. I was going to sound to my family and, and friends and everything, but I had the respect uh, whose voice like kind of said something. And even inside, even though inside of me, uh, I, I was like, I, screw off, Brian. I can do this. Like, let's go to work. Right. 
as soon as he said it, my, I, I, I just, my guard dropped and, and, and it was like, I was kind of that rookie all over again was kind of the feeling I had. And then he was instantly taking care of me. All right, here, Perry, look, I already got a car set up for you. Look, we come this way. So, you know, Hey, we're just going to tell everybody you're sick. You, you know, you go home, you know, get taken care of and then uh, move forward to that next day. Um, that next morning, um, when I knew, uh, I, I knew that I, I needed help, I, even when he walked in and it was funny, I just remember, and he was talking and I don't, I couldn't tell you a word he said, I, I wasn't listening at all. I was just in my own head going, tell him, tell him, tell him, tell him, tell him. And, and literally it was, it's just lots tell him was the last thing I said in my head because of that connection, because of the relationship we had. And, and it, it Again, I don't know if I could have admitted to anyone else I needed help at that moment, too. So so there's two incidences there. And we instantly, I mean, he had me. I mean, when I, he had me when I should have known something was up with how quickly there was a flight scheduled back home <laughs> in Minnesota where Benny Clymer picked me up and right to Arizona. <laughs> like, geez, I think these guys had this planned out for a while. <laughs> I, I guess I might, I might have been drinking too much. <laughs> you know? <laughs> And, and he's just the support uh, that I've gotten, obviously, from him and and and, the, and everyone else. Uh, and he's so – he hates it, too. I still thank him. Uh, lots of thank you. Same like, ah, oh, shut up, shut up, Harry. Uh, he gets embarrassed about it, for God's sakes. He's just a, he's just an amazing man uh, that I can't say enough about of, uh, that, I, that I thank each and every day. My wife does. Um, and I, I got through it without crying. <laughs> I'm <laughs> – uh, I'm kind of impressed. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I've been. I'm lucky. Uh, I, I got a. I got a. I got a second lease on life. I got a second chance at life, uh, and I owe it uh, to my family, to my kids, to my wife, to 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 everyone that supported me, to to my fans, to everyone that ever supported me, to to now take this and and do live my best life possible. Um, and, and do what I can to give back. And, and uh, again, it's kind of funny that I'm doing it through alcohol. <laughs> oh, you should have seen my therapist when I first said <laughs> that. <laughs> oh, my God. I said, so, Mark, what do you do? Well, uh, you own a vodka company. And she started giggling a little bit. And I was like, really? I'm like, yeah. You want to know the kicker? My wife sells wine and she almost fell out of her chair for crying out loud. Oh uh, man. And, and she was incredible. She's like, Hey, you're going to keep it. And, and it's a business truly to, to, yeah. to, to talk about it quickly. It's a business. A, a lot of people own businesses that they don't, they aren't in. Uh, how many owners own NHL hockey teams that can't skate a lick? Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's a business of mine. It, it started up and I'm, I'm thankful that it, that, that I was able to, it's, it's my baby, that it's my recipe. I'm thankful that other people enjoy it. I, it's just not me anymore. I, I kind of right. go back to when I was, uh, you know, I didn't drink through my first year at St. Cloud. Actually, it wasn't until my sophomore year uh, where I had my first drink. So I was 20 years old. So my first 20 years, I didn't drink and I had all kinds of pressure, you know, high school, every, you know, the, the peer pressure growing up. I hear Mark have a sip. Well, now I don't have the peer pressure and I just fall back into that mindset where it's, it's just, it's not there. It's not, it's, I don't drink anymore. It's not mine. It's, it's just kind of out of sight, out of mind. Uh, you know, and I, I'm, I'm not, uh, hey, there's, there's the alcoholics addiction, the disease is, is yeah, there's plenty of days, uh, but, but alcohol isn't part of it anymore. The, I still have the anxiety, I still have the stress, there's depression and things that, that, that go along with it, but it, alcohol just isn't an option. So it's now, it's like, all right, let's go for a run. All right, let's do some yoga with my wife. All right, let's go tickle Turner, or, you know, <laughs> whatever it is, it's just find something else to do to be sidetracked. And, and I, I couldn't be happier with, with the place I'm in right now with my family and friends and with how Northland is going and with, with the, how we've handled the situation, how my partners uh, have helped me, uh, how, how much they've supported me and made it easy for me. Uh, I, 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 man, I've, I thank everybody. I, I feel like I should have had a list here. Like I just won an Oscar and, and just start <laughs> rattling off every name here and thank hey. everyone because I really, honestly, that's what I want to do. I, I, I'm just lucky. And the people that support Northland uh, and, and we make sure that we give back to where it comes from. Uh, you know, we have software we track. We know who buys the most booze. So Virginia has been doing really well. Hutchinson's been doing really well. Well, we're, we're, we're making sure that, that, that those donations, the money goes back to who's supporting us. Yeah. 
Man. No, that that that's amazing, and and thanks for sharing. And I'll, I'm just and I speak on Hobby's behalf here too, and and everyone who we work with. But like your happiness is the most important thing, and you being healthy as well. So very glad to hear, and I can see it, you know, right right on your face throughout this whole time talking. <laughs> like you are happy now, and that's that's amazing. Uh, that that's amazing to see. Just just one last thing, Mark. Um, and if you and if you don't mind sharing, what what would you? What would you say to those people right now who maybe have their guard up, who who aren't listening to the the Brian Lawtons in in their life, who still have that internal voice saying, "No, I'm fine, I'm fine," and like I said, who have that guard up, who are still like chasing that happiness? What what would you say to those people now that you've you're still working on yourself and it's it's an everyday thing, but now that you're kind of on the other side of it? I, I you know what, in a nutshell, you kind of nailed it. If you're not happy, you need to make a change. Uh, there's you're not. No one's happy. I wasn't happy. I hated myself. I absolutely hated myself. I didn't think I had a drinking problem. That's the beauty of the disease. But I was, I hated myself. I was unhappy with where I was. Uh, if there's demons, if it's depression, anxiety, anything like that, any kind of stress or anything going like that, reach out for help. Even if it, even if it doesn't have to do with addiction or alcoholism, it just, there's so much help. And I have learned uh, from just how, oh my God, I love therapy. I love therapy now. I, 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 I'm, I'm not, you know, I suppose I'm big enough man to admit that, I, you know, especially the stigma, the stigma is very mm -hmm. important to me now. And, and I, I, I fed it for a long time. I don't need a therapist or, you know, what do you need to talk to somebody for? Oh my God, I love it. It's awesome. I, I just, I sit there for an hour and I just let go and first just listens and it helps. It's, it's spectacular. It helps with my anxiety uh again with with all the uh mental you know obviously and I, that's where a lot of my issues started with was concussions and, and we I had a lot of concussions over my career and that's why i went to the meadows in wickenburg arizona uh they had neurofeedback they had they had they had all this neurology equipment and, and it was crazy i looked like doc brown and back to the future <laughs> with all these wires you know and they could like pinpoint where the concussions were and, and you know they asked me how many i had of that uh, six or seven on record They're like i ah, you're over a dozen which maybe i could have done without hearing but you know <laughs> it was amazing the information that they had and, and the work that was done on that and just fixing the person inside fixing the pain uh you know if i i guess it's as simple as if you're wondering, if you're if you're on the fence, if you're sitting there wondering you have a problem, you got a problem. Yeah. Reach out for help. Your friends and family, it's a, it was the greatest thing I ever did in my life. I, again, I should say it was the greatest thing lots of you ever did for me in my life. Yeah. And I mean, to, to your point too, Mark, because like you said, like you have just a laundry list of people that you want to thank and can't. And you got There's, to most of them though. So that's yeah, great. No, <laughs> and you got through most. You got through most. I got the wife, Nikki, I love you to death. I got you, baby. Uh, but I mean, like on the flip side, I I don't know if it's one. I don't know if it's a hundred. I don't know if it's more, but like there's that many people who like you telling your story and showing that like it's okay to want to be okay, right? Like you have that many people that are also thanking you for just being open and sharing all of this. So like again, from us here, like thank you for that too. Oh, thank you. It's the, this, it's been flat out overwhelming. Uh, I still get, uh, I'll get a direct message or, or somebody tweet at me saying, Hey, you know, I was just in a meeting and, uh, somebody came in and read your note, read your article. And that's why they checked themselves in. And, uh, I, I, I'm so happy about that. And, and I do kind of feel bad because in a lot of ways, I, 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 the article, it was kind of, it was for selfish reasons was a, was a big part. I, I, my whole life has been played out in the media and, uh, I'm just used to that. Uh, it, my, my life is an open book and not then all of a sudden, like I had this dirty little secret that I was hiding with alcoholism and addiction. Well, then I came out of rehab and I'm supposed to be this better person. Well, then I was still hiding this secret, you know, this anonymous, you know, and, and anonymity. And I, I understand I'm not, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to go off on, on anything like that. I need a program or anything. It's an amazing program and I, I still follow it. And, uh, it works. It works if you work it. And, um, but, you know, I just wanted to get it off my chest. Mm -hmm. I, 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 it was, it truly was just something that was eating me alive inside. And, and I wanted to get it off my chest and I felt so amazingly good. Felt so good to open up to Russo and I felt amazing 
And then he called me the night before and said, the article is coming out tomorrow morning. And I did not sleep a wink. I was absolutely <laughs> horrified. I was terrified. I'm like, my God, what did I do? This is going to ruin me, this and that. And no, it's just been, it's been incredible. Uh, I, I'm so thankful for the people that obviously have come out and uh, with the support and, and, and even more so for the people that have gone to get help. Uh, and it's, it's there. It's out there. You, you just got to ask. It's just that simple. Yeah. No. And I mean, you, you nailed it there though. You absolutely picked the right person to try and tell that story. I don't know if there's anyone better even outside of Minnesota to try and tell just <laughs> so much, so much was captured within, you know, the, the amount of words that Russo chose to use. He, he, uh, he, I, you know, there was a little bit of fear in his eye when I first asked him, I'm like, you know what I'm going to ask you to do. Right. And he's like, you gotta be kidding me. You're going to make me write that story. <laughs> and he felt so much pressure <laughs> Yeah, it's, you know, because he interviewed all these people and he had so much, he had so much, so many notes and, and uh, hundreds of pages and interviews and everything. And, and then he's got to knock it down to a story and he absolutely nailed it. And, and I, you know, obviously that, that's, that's a huge part of it. You, I mean, one, yeah, it's my story, but the way Russo wrote it, the way he told it, my God, uh, that man is... He's incredible. I'm I'm so lucky to have friends like that. I, I have got incredible friends, and and I'm so thankful for their support and their love. And and now I just get to live my life for them. That's awesome. And now we're we're gonna take a hard 180 here, Mark, because obviously that was I mean that's a lot, right? You just poured a <laughs> yeah, ton out here, yeah. right? But it helps, I mean, so I appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, hey whenever anytime. you need someone, you know. You got two more friends right here. We can always talk. Thank you guys. Thank not, you. Guys. Not just on podcast, by the way. <laughs> not, <laughs> not just it doesn't have to be recorded. <laughs> um, but um, you made it through, right? We got through this obscure version of initials. I, I got to give you a second here to just talk about the the mutants that you get to work with every week that are the power trip morning show. Like we've heard the stories, right? Like Carly Zucker told the, the horrifying story of when they pranked her on air, Brett Michaels, right? Oh, like, yeah. like, oh, what, yeah. what is it like working with them? And you, you've got to share, like, what's your like biggest, like, whoa moment when you're like, okay, this is who I'm with. <laughs> Man, you know, it was kind of funny. Cause, uh, I, I, I knew one of Hawk's friends and, and I, he, he invited me onto the show a couple of times and I, I mean, it's just a radio show and no offensive. <laughs> I've done a bunch of those, done a hundred of those, those uh, interviews and gone on radio shows. And plus I was retired and waking up before 9am was not part of my program. And, and uh, my buddies were just like, you got to go on the show. You got to go on this show. It's, it's amazing. You got to go on that show. So finally I kind of went on the show and, and they invited me back and everybody does that. Everybody invites you back. Yeah, come on every time. Yeah, yeah, okay, see you later. So I didn't go back. And then I got destroyed the next week for not going back. And oh my God, my my family, everyone, my phone was blowing up. I was at the doctor's office. And so I actually did have a legit excuse. Like, <laughs> why aren't you back on the show? And I was like, holy crap, what is this thing? And I started to go on the power trip. And uh, honest to God, the, the thing that's amazing uh, one, they get paid for that. Uh, that is just awesome that they get paid to do what they do because they do it very well. And God knows what's going to happen every second you're on the show. There, there's an outline of what we're going to talk about. Never finishes with it. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and, and it just, Lieber and I, Rosen, you know, all of us talked about it. T.O., when you go on radio shows, yeah, you do radio shows. Yeah, you might build a relationship. You know, I, I went on uh, PA in Dubai back in the day. So I've gotten, I got to know PA through that. But, you know, we're buddies. You know, it was a relationship like that. All of a sudden on the power trip, like we didn't expect to become great friends. Mm -hmm. Like we all didn't expect to be doing text chains all day long about the stupidest stuff ever. You know, the same stuff we talk about on air. <laughs> and, you know, and going in there, all of a sudden going in the morning, it replaced that locker room. It replaced being with the guys, the stuff that you miss cool. the most about being retired, you're going in there and, and, you know, everybody gets held accountable. You don't get away with a damn thing. <laughs> and they're just going to rip you apart for no matter what, even if it's a good thing, they're going to tear you apart. And that's just, I, I instantly fell in love with it. And, and it, it didn't, it didn't dawn on me uh, how big they were until uh, legit. I went out to the NHL network my first time 
And when they hired me, they're like, yeah, we hear you on a pretty big radio show. We like that too. And nationally, we're, we were getting comp- questions from Power Trip listeners nationally. So from like New York, that was my whole, like, I, I had to answer like, like a dozen questions from Twitter or whatever. And it was all Power Trip listeners. It just That's blew awesome. my mind, uh, you know, and, and it's just, it's a, it's a phenomena uh, that uh, they don't even know what they're, they, what they've done or how they've done it. They have found this magic of, of humor and, and, and caring and a lot more humor uh, <laughs> and a little bit of sports in there. Uh, <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> and, and man, I, I couldn't imagine not doing it now. You know, Corey threatens like, ah, oh, I'm done after, you know, 20, 25 years. No, screw you. You got to keep going because I want to keep doing this, Corey. <laughs> Think about your contributors, Cove. <laughs> Amazing. No, it's, it's incredible. It's so much fun. It's literally as much fun as it sounds. Oh, that's awesome. I mean, uh, it's, I've even, you know, it's even, I've even heard of it. I've even started listening to it. And like, I, I don't have the connection, you know, of being in Minnesota to really get all like the little references here and there. But my morning show got cut out here when, uh, when TSN got cut, they were my, they're my show out here on the West coast. So I've, uh, I've been waking up a little extra early at times to listen to the, the power trip and uh, the initials nice. game. But uh, Mark, this has been outstanding here. We're out of time. We thank you for yours again. Keys to the castle are yours. You have two new friends here. We're, we're excited to bring you back on any sing- anytime you want, sir. And again, thrilled to be working with you and the entire Northland Vodka team this season. Um, we're excited to be partners there. Again, Hoppy's repping the swag. And yeah, open invitation here anytime, Mark, on the Soda Pod. This was outstanding. Oh, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it, guys. Thank you very much, my new friends. Thank you. And yeah, absolutely. We'll come in maybe, I don't know, 25 games in, 30 games in, do a little wild update or yeah. a NHL update. I get to go out and work out there too. So yeah, I'd love to come on. When you guys are bored, finally want me back. You guys let me know. <laughs> Sounds <laughs> good. Sounds good. Thanks, Mark. We appreciate it. Thanks, guys.